Hi, DSL baby, what's happening? We're gonna come at you today. Two reasons why people do not like you. Stay tuned. And I'm gonna get you a nice, beautiful shot of that DSL right there. Where's that? Where's that sunlight? There she is. Beautiful sun, right? Out here in the direct sunlight. Now we're gonna go ahead and make this quick video. These are two reasons why people don't like you and um, a little bit of background as to why that is. So one, you're desperate or you seem desperate when you're speaking with people. It's one reason why people don't like you. And um, the way that you can seem desperate can be twofold. You can seem desperate strongly or you can seem desperate softly. It doesn't have to be, oh, I'm desperate so I'm going, going, going after something, looking for someone, right? Or looking for an answer or something like that. No, 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 no. You can be softly desperate as well, and I'll explain. So strong. You can bring too much attention to things that actually don't matter, such as hair, uh, someone's outfit, perhaps their face if they're a good looking person, um, their eyes, um, the things that just end up not really having much of a significant standpoint when it comes to expressing how someone actually uh, reveals themselves to you. And this goes beyond just what you can see. Visually, visual is excellent. That's the thing. Visual is what keeps things moving. That's what keeps us moving is being able to see, hear, feel, and have all the other senses, right? But visualization is not the only sense that we possess as human beings, and it's not the only sense that we can project onto others in order to get a better understanding of who it is that we're talking to and to get that person to quote unquote like you. So other than that, those material things they are short-lived. It's the best way I could put it. They do somewhat have a connection. It's material and it's short-lived. It does not have much longevity with it. So think about things that are outside of that, right? Such as, oh, you have a very nice voice, right? Who says that? Oh, I like your voice. It may sound creepy, it may sound weird, but why not be the person to break that mold of saying I like your voice being creepy or being weird? Why not be the person who it, it gets someone excited about the fact that they like their voice rather than their hair, right? Not saying your hair isn't beautiful, not saying my hair isn't beautiful. It's just the fact of the matter that those are common things that people are complimented on or that people think about on a daily basis. So make someone think about something other than that about themselves. Have something else to value in themselves other than the traditional what um, everyone else is saying basically. So number two, you can be soft with it too, which meaning you don't bring that attention, one, to yourself, or you desperately avoid the attention that you may be getting, okay? Now, this goes for my soft-spoken people. Not saying being soft-spoken is a bad thing, good thing, wrong thing, right thing. It just is a thing. However, if you are a soft-spoken person, well, this is for you. When you don't bring attention to yourself or you're desperately avoiding the attention, you are actually making it so you receive more attention than you want. You receive more attention than you want and that attention comes in a form of victimization. You, you, you seem like you are a victim when you're desperately avoiding attention. Desperately avoiding attention helps you to seem more like a victim. Amazing, right? Instead of, and this isn't me. This, is, this, this isn't me making this stuff up, guys, okay? Let's just put that out there. This is not me making these items up. These are things that have been seen to be true in day-to-day -day life, one. Two, they are also scientifically proven. And three, I'm sure, if you're listening and watching, let's get a better view. If you're listening and watching, you felt this in your life where the more you didn't want some attention or the more you didn't want someone to bring something up or the more that you didn't want something at all, the quicker it came, right? So those are two ways that you can seem desperate, right? And a lot of us, we don't think, oh, we can seem desperate by being the opposite of desperate when in reality, all you got to do is be neutral to the attention at all. 
be neutral. If you're one of these people who seem desperate by being less desperate, be neutral to the attention. Just don't care whether it comes your way or not. Just don't care. All right. Now, the second reason why people don't like you, the second reason why people don't like you is because you're only thinking about yourself when you're having a conversation with somebody. You're not thinking about them. Why would you be thinking about them? You're thinking about what you're going to say next. <laughs> you're thinking about how you look, right? You're thinking about how what they're saying is making you feel. That's why you, you're not thinking about what's happening in that other person's mind. You're not even, you're not even close to tapping into what is happening in that other person's mind to help them to like you a little bit better. Now, I'm not the type of person who says, hey, everybody in your fucking life, you have to have them love you. Every single person in your life, love you. No, no. Love you spiritually, sure. But love you as a person, no. Not everybody has to like you. Half the people that are gonna watch this fucking video would probably not like me if they met me. But I have a lot of people who do like me because I focus on what they're saying. I will sit there and spend three hours, and I'm not advocating for myself here, it's just an example. I will sit there for three to four hours listening to someone speaking. I will, of course, be saying something. I won't just sit there like, mm. no, I'm going to say stuff. But what I'm saying is only piggyback, piggybacking off of what they are expressing, what they want, right? They're, they want to be able to talk to someone about this. They want to be able to tell somebody about this, about whatever it may be, stories in their lives, stories that they've told a hundred freaking times. It doesn't matter. It affects everybody's ears differently. So don't act like everybody else when you hear these things come your way. Now, that little voice in your head is louder than the person that you can see or are supposed to be listening to. Like I just said, it's asking, uh, excuse me, it's asking questions about you, about yourself. That little voice inside your own head is asking you questions about yourself, such as, why am I tilting my head? Because I do that too. I tilt my head when I'm listening to people. I'm like, why the fuck am I tilting my head? And I just totally missed what they said for those few seconds. Why am I tilting my head? Because that voice is louder. Another one, uh, how can they ignore my bad breath? How can they ignore that my breath smells like shit right now? <laughs> You're thinking about that, which of course you don't want to be smelling like having your breath smell like crap in front of people, of course, but it's just the fact of the matter of, does it, if it doesn't matter to that person, that should not even be crossing your brain, that thought right there. And if it does, it should be immediately silenced. Another one, what am I going to say next? Like I just said, what am I going to say next? And damn, I got to go. Hurry up. Hurry up. Finish talking. Hurry up. Hurry up. You have the cash register. Dude, hurry up. Hurry the fuck up, bro. I can't not be late for this. Hurry up, my man. I don't care how your babies is doing. I don't care what happened to your car. I don't care if the person next to you just said, fuck you. I don't care. Fool, hurry up and cash out my groceries. Let's go. Well, if your intention is not to get that uh, cashier to like you, then sure, totally fine. But my intention in life is not to get everyone to like me, but to get everyone to respect me. And to get that respect, I have to give it first. I can't just go around asking for respect and not fucking give out any bit of it. I have to give more respect than I expect back, period. And that's normally how it happens. You give more and you receive a little bit less than what you gave. So the more you give, the more you're receiving. That's really the truth. So these questions right here, when you're only thinking about yourself, that little voice is in your head, these questions right here stop you from hearing the person and taking into account their feelings, their life, which is what you're there to encourage. You're there to encourage their struggle, their journey, their, their omnipresence, their ability to do things. Um, if someone's struggling through a hard time and they're telling you about it, more than likely, they don't need your advice. But if you say something along the lines of, hey, can I offer you some advice to that? I've done it. I've done it multiple times. And people will literally say, please do. No, please do. I want to hear what you have to say about it. Um, but they don't want to admit that. They don't want to say, hey, I'm telling you this whole story because I need some advice, man. No one's going to say that anymore. So I hope that the these, what, 15 minutes or so? Yeah, I hope these 15 minutes were enjoyable for you, that you were able to take some, some real uh, jewels out of it to be able to not only get people to like you better, but to get more respect from people that you deserve. But you have to give that respect that you were feeling so deserving of. All right? Peace, love, and our beautiful DSL.